Today we're being asked by some powerful people in our society not to think of ourselves as prisoners, but to reimagine ourselves as citizens with the power of our voice, our ideas, and our actions to make change, because this is our moment. When a man who sits in prison is asked the question, what can we do about the problem of mass incarceration in America? One can only imagine that we must have reached a moment that is pivotal. This is the moment when our personal biographies have intersected with America's history. This is the moment when our personal destinies have become intertwined with America's destiny. And so this is the moment when we must awaken to the realization that we are not lone travelers, but we are all interconnected, whether bondmen or free. And we must face the challenge of fixing the problem of mass incarceration in America together. America has the largest prison population in the world. There are currently over 2 million people incarcerated in America's prisons. The recidivism rate across this country has reached as high as 80%. We know America's prisons do not deter crime. We know America's prisons can make some people worse. And we know America's prisons are making American society worse. Therefore, this is our moment, not simply to help reshape the role of America's prisons, but to reshape our own identities, to reclaim our own humanity. We can change the role we play in American society. For years, self-serving conservative politicians have argued that people who commit crimes cannot change, that they are incorrigible, and they have controlled our narratives. They have controlled our destinies. But this no longer has to be. This is a moment when someone serving life in prison could actually be released and take on a new role like that of a corrections expert. You could be talking about prison reform at some university somewhere in America. Or you could be talking to youth about the pitfalls of drugs, gangs, and crime. Or you could be somewhere writing new legislation. You see, the problem of mass incarceration has given voice to the voiceless. It has given us this unique opportunity to change this get tough on crime rhetoric into a narrative about finding common sense solutions to crime. With our experience and our ideas, we hold the key. With our voice and our actions, we have power. As C. Wright Mills once said, by the fact of living, we contribute however minutely to the shaping of society and the course of its history. So why not use this power we have to reshape our society in a way that benefits us all? This is a moment when our personal biographies in America's history can reshape each other, not by accident, but on purpose. Today, in American society, we are witnessing the birth of a new political movement. Millions of system-impacted men and women are aligning themselves with grassroots political organizations all over this country. We are no longer politically paralyzed, but we are politically mobilized. Our voice, our ideas, and our actions matter. And we have already made significant change. In the state of California, thousands of incarcerated men learned about the power of their voice, their ideas, and their actions when they launched a coordinated effort to bring attention to the cruelty of indeterminate shoe programs and solitary confinement. Thousands of women stood up to put an end to the inhumane practices of unconsensual sterilizations. In the state of Florida, millions of formerly incarcerated men used their power and their voice to fight to regain the right to vote. In the states of Colorado, Utah, and Nebraska, millions of system-impacted men and women used their voice, their ideas, and their actions to stand up against white supremacy and corporate greed and to put an end to the inhumanity of slavery and involuntary servitude in their state prison systems. 
but this is only the beginning. Californians are now on course to do the same. All across this country, states are hearing our cries for change and formerly incarcerated people are becoming leaders. Over 70 million Americans have been system impacted. Many are formerly incarcerated. Many are convicted felons. Many are on probation or parole. And many of us have been disenfranchised. But we have the numbers. We have the vote and the power to make change. We have the power to impact change in our communities, in American society, and in the world. And this is our moment.